Well, I bought this uh, remote planar readout from uh, Wixi, and I'm going to attach it to the uh, my jet uh, combination joiner planer. And uh, so I posted a picture of it, a new toy on uh, Twitter, and this fellow by the name of uh, Greg Jones, who lives in Berea, Kentucky, uh, posted some pictures uh, of one that he did. And uh, it saved me a lot of time thinking about how to mount it. And these are the pictures, uh, he did it like eight years ago. These are the pictures that he posted on Twitter. But it shows um, mounting the uh, sensing unit on the back side and then uh, running the wire through the bottom and then mounting the readout on the other side, uh, which is the feed side. So this makes a whole lot of sense to me and saves me a lot of time thinking about it, just how to go about or where to, to mount the, the thing. So that's what I'm going to do is just follow uh, Greg's uh, suggestion. So we'll get started with it. Here's the pieces that came with it. You got the uh, sensor here uh, that moves up and down uh, the readout and the, the cable that runs between the two. It needs three or two AAA batteries. And uh, then you have some instructions here, so uh, we'll get started by uh, marking up where we got to drill some holes. This is the uh, actual device. It's a magnet that you mount on the uh, table uh, that moves up and down, and that magnet attaches to here and moves moves that up and down. So that's how it keeps track of uh, what the dimension is. So uh, first we'll get it marked out and uh, get started with it. What we need to do is uh, drill a couple of holes and they supplied the uh, drills for the uh, self-tapping screws here. So we just want to make sure that this thing is lined up correctly straight away on there so you don't want it above the the uh, we'll put a scribe on. so I'm pre-threading the uh, self-tapping screws that they gave you so it's better to do that before attaching the bracket. It seemed to be mounted pretty straight. So then this will move in and out to uh, attach to the like so. So now I have to uh, mark over here where uh, the, the mounting bracket is and drill two more holes and make sure this thing is uh, perpendicular to the, um, to the base. You'd definitely want that to be straight uh, there so that when this ru runs up and down it doesn't bind at all or doesn't slip. So that'll be the next step. Mark, mark off over here and then drill two, two more holes. Well, I've got it um, mounted now. So I'll zoom in here a little bit so that you can see um, what's going on there. So you can't see the two screws on the other side of the rail, but uh, you can see how I got it hooked up. So um, let me back out here a hair so you can see what's going on.
So some of the things that I thought about when I mounted it, which was how high this rail should be. And um, of course you don't use it all the way up. This is set at about three quarters of an inch now. So it will only go up. This will only go up three quarters of an inch at the maximum because uh, you typically don't plane things quite that thin anyway. And then as far as depth goes, it'll go down to six inches where it gets stored down here. But uh, of course, when you do planing, it's typically between a half inch and an inch and a half, that sort of thing. Once in a while you're doing um, cabriolet legs or that and you're, you're um, planing a three inch piece or something, but usually not much larger than that. So this is the area where uh, most of the readings are gonna take place. So I mounted the bracket in that area where I thought uh, it would be the stablest. The other thing I, I thought about is that we wanted this thing to be uh, pretty much as low as possible because as the board comes out of the planer, sometimes there's tip. And um, we, we wouldn't want it to be hitting that because it would probably knock it out of a line. So now I, I stuck the cable that they provided in there and we're gonna route it around here, leaving some slack over here um, for it obviously to move up and down. And they gave these cable ties here that just stick on so we can route it from back here to the front where the readout uh, will be. So that's about 1316, so we'll see how well that calibrates. We'll see if we can get this block of wood into these jaws over here. So according to the instructions here, I'm supposed to turn it on and press and hold it for three to five seconds until the ABS thing flashes and then press again to set. Remove the board allowing the jaws to close completely, tighten and lock the knob and the display should show the thickness of the board. And it shows 20 millimeters. 20 millimeters is how much in inches? 0 0.80 in inches. So that's, that's pretty close and then we'll measure the block with the calipers. <laughs> well, I have two different calipers here, and this says 0 0.790, and it's supposed to be 0 0.80, so it's off a, a tenth. Um, or a hundredth, rather. And I have this um, mechanical one and it measures seven uh, nine one so it's uh close to uh, what these two are so we'll fiddle with it a little more but it's uh, probably within tolerance so now i'm turning it up to there's seven five oh or three quarters of an inch. So let's see what happens. Oh. 
And since I didn't lock it in, it now reads 745. So it moved by half because I, I didn't lock it down there. But let's see what the uh, calipers say here. And it says, uh, well, you can see it. That reads, uh, oh, there's 750, 748, 749. So that's pretty close. Oh, I think we got a winner. I'll turn it off here. No sense wasting the battery. And uh, we'll work with it for a little while and see how happy we are. But that's the, ins <coughs> that's the installation.